Hey guys, think I have got a new build using the Winter Charup Terran build that I actually prefer over the build that I posted yesterday. The reason I prefer this build is because it is an anti-Dragon Mage, Dragon Mage build. Uh, this is an adapted version of Dragon Knights. Those of you that have played Dragon Knights in the past know that you run six knights and then you run the dragons, which were previously Feathered Dragon and also uh, Venom. This time round, you swap Venom for Winter Charup Terran, and at level nine, instead of adding Soul Reaper for the Agursus bonus, you add Tortola Elder or God of Thunder to give yourself the Mage bonus. This is essentially giving you the anti-mage component, which is six knights. The reason six knights are anti-mage is because they very, very consistently get a shield that gives them lots of magic resist. And then you add in the Dragon Mage component, which helps you beat things like Warrior. It helps you beat things like Mages themselves with, with the Totola Elder or with the um, with the God of Thunder. And in general, it's a really strong build, I feel. I think I will be building this Dragon Mage build more so than anything else because I think it beats regular Dragon Mage. Uh, the only issue that it's going to have is it's very susceptible to things like Dark Spirit. Um, Dark Spirit is really the only unit that is going to hard counter this, but I think it generally does pretty well versus every other build out there, which is why I am actually really excited about using this build in ranked next season, because I think it capitalizes on Dragon Mages the best. It also makes Winter Charup Terran a good unit, because um, realistically Winter Charup Terran is a really bad unit overall. Um, for those of you that don't know, I will explain Winter Charup Terran's abilities at the start of the game, uh, but let's talk about the Switch giveaway. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell on the channel then leave a comment on the videos that you get notifications for. At the end of September, I will do another draw for the Switch. We've already had a winner in July who won an Xbox. We've won a Switch in August, and again, it's a Switch for uh, for September too. Claytana is giving away a PS4, so go and check him out. So, I'm going to actually do something that I haven't done before, by the way. Uh, I'm going to be speeding up my gameplay two times. This is to make the video shorter, but I also think you can catch all of the action. Um in a shorter time frame essentially and i hope you don't mind that um i would explain my decisions as we go and hopefully you won't miss anything and i know a lot of people watch my videos in two times anyway so i'm going to speed up the video to two times um i was talking talking about winter charup terran winter Char Char charup terran is a mage dragon unit that doesn't actually have any damaging abilities which makes it kind of a lackluster mage dragon unit um Essentially, it encases a unit that drops below 40% HP in a block of ice, and then that unit recovers 40% uh, recovers HP while also being immune to basic attacks and single target abilities. They are not immune to damage, they can still get affected by AoE abilities and still can still be killed by abilities affecting the floor. But overall, Winter Charup Terran is not a particularly good mage unit. It's just there to activate either six mages or dragons. However, in Dragon Knights, if you encase one of your tanky knights in a ice block and allows them to regenerate HP, that HP is worth more than usual because they get a shield that is going to uh, reduce the amount of damage they take. So every bit of HP that your knights regenerate, it looks better overall. So anyway, I'm going to explain my decision-making process over the first few rounds here. You saw me opt into goblins. You saw me opt in for the Heaven Bomber, which is something that I know is really strong in the early rounds. I know that goblins in general are very strong in the early rounds. I also went for a pair of Red Axes to give me the option to get a level 2 unit. Remember, in the early game, I generally look for level 2 units overall. Level 2 units are going to be my absolute bread and butter. So even just having a random Red Axe in the middle of a... Um, a random red axe in the middle of this kind of composition is fine. You might see here that I've picked up an Argali and an Evil Knight. This is a pretty good indication that Knights are a good uh, good play this game. Um, specifically because these are two core units to Dragon Knight compositions. If I was running Glacier Knights, I've got a core knight in the form of Evil Knight, and I can use my Argali Knight to tide me over until I find um, other forms of knights to get the knight bonus. But overall, getting two knights in one round, two three-cost knights in one round, is a good indication that this is a good option for me in this game. So now I'll be pretty much hard committing to knights. I'm actually going to be buying things like the Soulbreaker and the Skybreakers because they're going to be relevant up until around round 17 or 18. Um, goblins, if you're not committing to the full goblin build, remain relevant up until around between rounds 15 and 18, depending on the state of the game. So in general, you want to keep your goblins as long as you can because especially if they're level 2, they can be really good ways to generate win streaks. 
So you can see here, I picked up two Winter Charup Terrans. The reason I picked up the Winter Charup Terrans is because obviously they are going to be a core part of my Dragon build, and I'm pretty committed to Knights at this point. Once you commit to Knights, it's actually fairly easy to commit to a Dragon Knight build because you just need to find the Dragon Knight itself. Uh, I hit more gold luck, which is picking up a level 2 Frost Knight. Um, I don't really like level 2 Frost Knight. I don't think I like Frost Knight in general. I don't think it's a particularly good unit. Um, but it's very, very integral into the Dragon Knight build, which is why I uh, have got it here. Winter Charm Terran, you'll see in a minute um, why it's a little bit of a meme unit. Um, it, it basically encases something in ice, and then everything ignores that unit while it regenerates HP. Uh, this guy is super strong anyway, so I wasn't going to beat him, but realistically, Winter Charm Terran definitely didn't save the day for him. Um, you can see here that I've got a, a pair of e I've got a pair of Evil Knights, and I'm going to roll because I was essentially looking for either a Soul Breaker or an Evil Knight. I find the Evil Knight, and this is a time where I can sell Red Axe and pick up the Evil Knight. The reason is that he's Evil Knight is probably a better tank than Red Axe Chief, uh, and it also gives me the two Knight bonus, which is going to allow me to have a stronger composition overall without actually sacrificing much. Um, there wasn't really a space for me to take out Red Axe for anything there because I was activating a lot of synergies with my other units. So I decided to keep the Evil Knight in because he's two star. He's got more HP, he's got a shield built in, um, and in general he's he's pretty good. You can see that I'm going to put Winter Charup Terran in now. Now I think um, overall Winter Charup Terran is a pretty bad unit, however you combine that with Evil Knight at level 2 who has an inbuilt shield and also has the 2 Knight bonus, if I can encapsulate Evil Knight into a block of ice, um, essentially uh, I'm going to get a huge amount of value out of that tank unit. So it's actually not bad to have Winter Charup Terran on when you've got a really tanky boy in a knight lineup. I've kind of explained why I think he's good in six knights, because he's going to make one of your units uh, regenerate HP, uh, and that unit is going to be very, very powerful. So I actually have the option now to put on uh, four knights if I really wanted to, but I'd have to sacrifice the goblin bonus, and I still feel the goblin bonus is pretty relevant right now. The, what thing, the thing you might have been noticing is that I'm actually opting into a lot of aggressive roles early. This is something that I've been doing more and more often recently. The, you can see actually that's that's the, the strength of um, Winter Charm Terran with a tanky unit. You see my Argali Knight got loads of HP back and that HP was worth more because of the evil knight. Uh, sorry, because of the knight bonus because, you know, you're able to protect that HP with a knight bonus. So something that I've been doing more often recently is, is, is rolling early. Um, I like to roll early because it A, helps me find core units, but also if I'm contesting knights, I'm trying to find my level 2 nights as quickly as possible uh, economy if you have a, a in a strong position like me is not the worst thing in the world to try and build back later in the game uh, as long as i am trying to roughly hit level 8 by round 21 and i have the economy to do that I am happy to use my economy in the early game to get core two stars onto the field. It's something that I've been doing more and more often recently, and I think overall it's something that I think is um, is changing the way that I approach the early game. I used to basically play the early game for get level get 50 gold, and then that's that's where you play your game from there. And if you're loose streaking or open 14, that's absolutely the way that you should play. And if you're middling, that is something that you should consider. Um, look at the value that I get out of my Evil Knight here. I actually end up losing this, but it keeps my Evil Knight a lot, a lot, a lot um, alive for a lot longer in this particular instance. And I actually also end up losing my, my win streak bonus, just as we're about to head into a round where I can level up. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm now basically playing the economy game. And something that is, is worth noting is that this is playing the economy game right now, because I, I essentially... Um, I essentially have to no win streak and no loss streak right now and I have to build back I do actually have to build up to 50 gold at some point So I was thinking of just rolling extensively and going then to level 7 because I thought I was one of the strongest players in this game Turns out there's a lot of good beast warrior players in this game who have been super strong uh, And I'm actually getting beaten by a lot of people. So this is just now me building economy so what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to skip forward a few rounds. Um, the reason I don't want to skip forward just yet is because there's some important decisions that I make around round 16 or 17 where I actually switch my build up. Um, you can see here that I'm actually opting to get rid of my Skybreaker now and go for the four knights, which is what I've got going on right now. Uh, four knights with just two two-star goblins. I lose the goblin bonus, but my knights overall are pretty strong at this point because I've got level two hell knight. So I actually feel my composition as a whole is pretty good. You can see me picking up the Tortola Elder. This is one of the core four costs to the to the um, the build that I want to play. Remember, you can play God of Thunder instead. Um, there is some decisions that I make in the late game that don't quite work out here. Um, but what I want to show you in a minute is the way that I adapt my build to actually have a mage bonus in early with the knight. So what I want to mention, by the way, guys, is because I've got Tortola Elder, um, it, it is worth noting that Tortola Elder works best when you have magic regeneration items like Magicka Crystal. 
Um, really, you need Magicka Crystal to make this build work um, really well for Tortola Elder because he doesn't generate his own mana very quickly. The dragons are fine, so your mage, your mages in terms of your Shining Dragon is fine because he gets his mana instantly at the start of the round. If you don't have any Magicka Crystals, it might be best avoiding God of War and avoiding uh, Tortola Elder and going for something like Thunder Spirit. Thunder Spirit has a quick attack speed, so he generates his mana fairly quickly by himself. But I want to show you the switch that I made in the mid game here. Um, the switch that I made with my mages into a knight build, because it actually ends up being um, a really, really good mid game switch for me, because it allows me to start generating win streaks. So I want to note, show you uh, exactly what I did here. Remember, I had almost no economy this entire game, but I'm okay because I've got most of my core build at two stars, so it's fine. I also have the HP to work with. So you see, I level up here. I'm just going to have a look around at some other people. I'm going to sell off my goblins at this point, and now we're going to move into the very beginnings of our positioning for our, um, our Dragon Mage build. I'm also going to put all of my Magicka Generation items onto my Tortola Elder. And then you're going to, I want to see, just, I just want to show you how much damage uh, this build can do, even with a level 1 Tortola Elder. You see, the front line is really tanky, and you see we're just in a really strong position. This allows me to generate a win streak from here. If you can hear Rupert in the background, by the way, guys, I'm sorry. Um, he's just chilling. So, I'm going to switch over now to uh, a few rounds later. I've started to build an economy. I am not level 8 yet, but basically I feel that I've got the um, the Dragon Knight on the field. Now I've got Dragon... Essentially, my Dragon Mage is finished. Uh, I feel like I'm strong enough to avoid um, having to, like, desperation level to level 8. And I'm actually just going to be working towards um, level 9 naturally here. Sorry, it's level 8 and level 9 naturally. So what that means by naturally, I call it slow leveling. Slow leveling is where you wait past 50 gold and you use the interest from plus 50 gold to level up to level 8. So I'm slow leveling here because I feel like I've got a really strong level 7 composition. Remember, I am looking for Lightblade Knights. I'm looking for an Agali Knight to get into level 2. I do want to get to level 9 so I can get my 6 Knight bonus in. But overall, you can see, like, once I get to Toller Elder level 2, and once I get Dragon Knight level 2, um, I'm in a really strong position overall. And you can see that the build is, is even beating really strong Knight builds at level... Um, really strong Knight builds at level 8. Uh, I'm also actually going to sell off the Shining Dragon. Shining Dragon is a nice thing to get to level 3, but overall my priorities are normal Knight composition level 3s, which are Lightblade Knight and Hell Knight. Those are my absolute priorities when it comes to getting things to level 3. Uh, when it comes to level 2, matters of priority in this build are going to be Dragon Knight and Tortola Elder. Those are the absolute uh, most important deals when it comes to, uh, to getting my build online. You can see here that I, I end up losing to a Poisonous Worm. And this is just because this is a Beast Glacier. Like a, he was running a Beast Glacier build. Um, and overall, um, with Poisonous Worm, it's really difficult for mage builds to beat beast warrior but knight builds do okay and dragon knight builds do okay into beast warrior so i have part of my build that does fine the problem is that i don't have light blade knight so i don't have the basic attack damage to deal with them i'm basically all magic damage at this point um so i don't actually have the regular attack damage to win out here uh, you can see that i'm also just starting to lose now versus some more accomplished um warrior builds but that's okay because again i managed to build a win streak to get to 50 gold and I, as you can see i'm literally just slow leveling at this point slow leveling to get to uh level nine now and when i get to level nine i'm going to bring on the light blade knight to activate my six knight bonus and then i'm just looking for a level two dragon knight i'm looking for a level two tortola elder and then i'm looking to level three my, also a level three to a garden knight but then i'm looking to level three things like my uh light blade knight i'm looking to level three things like my hell knight which is your normal dragon knight um dragon knight builds so you can see that i'm going to put um uh, you might find this kind of interesting. I'm putting uh, attack speed onto my, my Dragon Knight. That's because Dragon Knight uh, benefits the most from attack speed. Um, all damage will still go onto my Light Blade Knight, which is why I'm retaining my um, Lifesteal Mask and I'm also retaining the Broken Sword because all of my damage is still going to go on to the normal, um, to the normal um, uh, Dragon Knight composition stuff. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is that I'm struggling with Dragon Knight to actually get work done here. The reason being is that Dragon Knight level 1 does not apply the splash damage magic over time, which is causing an issue for me. I also have a level 1 Tortola Elder, and by the way, level 1 Tortola Elder is really bad. Um, I actually accelerate my level to level 9 here. I've still got a really strong economy, um, and I'm going to roll down to try and find some of the core pieces of my build. I'm looking for a, uh, obviously, Dragon Knight. I'm looking for a Hell Knight. I'm looking for a Tortola Elder. Because we've got everything else pretty much there right now. But you can see like just how strong this build becomes at level 9. Even versus quite accomplished hunter builds. We're having a great time. Imagine that if we get the Orb of Refresh completed on my um, 
if, if, imagine if we get the Orb of Refresh completed on my Tortola Elder, and also imagine if we get a level 2 Dragon Knight, um, and you know, also get a level 3 Light Blade Knight and a level 3 Hell Knight, by the way, that'd be insane. Um, you can see here that I've just got like a, uh, a, 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 like literally on my last roll, I got two of the core pieces that I needed, including Tortola Elder and one extra Dragon Knight, uh, which is really good, like we're really happy with this. End up losing to a level 3 Dragon Knight, which is, you know, kind of expected, but I, sorry, level 2 Dragon Knight, but I do find Orb of Refresh on my um, Totola Elder, which is actually ridiculous. I also have uh, a Dragon Knight here, which I think because I've got the level, th level 2 Totola Elder with Orb of Refresh, I'm very happy to just say, cool, I'm going to just wait for this. I'm going to wait for this and pick it up with the gold. And you can see just how powerful uh, and how much damage we're doing versus the people that were be beating us earlier. We're in a really super strong position. Um, remember, now I'm essentially at the level that I want to be. I just want to find Dragon Knight. Um, I sell off the, the Frost Knight because he's not that important to get level 2 Dragon Knight. And suddenly we have our build. This is our build. We want to 3-star Hell Knight, which is very close. We really want to 3-star Light, uh, Light, Light Blade Knight because that's a main source of our damage. But other than that, we're really happy. Like, this is really good. You just take, you take the other 3-stars where you can get them. Obviously, it would be nice for me to get um, a 3-star Shining Dragon. He's actually super strong and massively underrated. But overall, we've basically got our build 100% online. So I've skipped forward, as you can see, a little bit just to this point in the game. Um, we've just got past round 30. This is the full build. This is the, the real deal. I just want to show you how much damage you can do. Obviously, you won't always get a Orb of Refresh on your Tortola Elder. But when you do, like for me, I, Orb of Refresh on my Tortola Elder is a really big deal. Um, level 2 Dragon Knight makes such a huge difference as well in terms of... Um, the ability just like just just the overall ability uh to deal with aoe damage uh, or deal to do to, to deal AO, aoe damage realistically um we are a never we've got another level two light blade knight here uh we've got a level two shining dragon like we're actually pretty close to a lot of core three stars uh this is ragnar who we were having trouble with earlier if you remember this guy's got the guy who who runs the um the beast warrior build with the poisonous worm absolutely crushed him this time around once our build was online absolutely crushed the guy uh you can see there's a strange egg here this strange egg i'm gonna keep there's also a god of thunder now i think realistically um i would have had a better chance in this game by going for god of thunder um i'm slowed down the end game now because we i've, I've kind of gone back to just normal 100 speed because I wanted to talk about specifically about positioning because we do some stuff when we have uh, the assassin guy and the other guy left in the game um, specifically with our positioning because we uh, position differently versus the guy who has a level 2 dark spirit than we position versus the guy who's got the assassins. The guy who's playing assassins is better for me to position like this than it is for me to position versus this the guy with the level 2 dark spirit. The only thing that hard counters 6 knights um is feathered but we deal with that because we've got the magic damage and dark spirit but we can't deal with the level two dark spirit very easily especially if it's got a lot of magic resist stacked onto it um so yeah i think dark spirit is um is definitely going to be an issue for us in this particular end game so I want to specifically look at how we position for the Dark Spirit versus how we position for the guy with Assassins because you can't position the same way for both of them. The corner positioning is bad for the um, Dark Spirit user who's got a level 2 Dark Spirit which is a direct heavy counter to Knights and then the split positioning is bad for the guy with Assassins because he's going to pick off my Tortola Elder very quickly and I'm going to lose a lot of my core units super fast. So we have to position in different ways for them, depending on who we're fighting in a particular round. Now, after a neutral round, uh, I'm assuming that I'm facing the assassin guy. Sorry, I'm assuming that I'm going to face the dark spirit guy for some reason. Um, but realistically, I could very well be facing the assassin guy. I end up facing the assassin guy, and you're going to see how devastating it is to have my my units positioned like they are right now versus the guy who runs the assassins versus the guy who um, has the dark spirit. The dark spirit. What I will note is that my positioning did beat Ragnar, who is the player with the dark spirit. Um, so I actually ended up beating him, uh, on his board. Now I know that after I faced the, after I faced the, um, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. After I faced the assassin guy, ah, no, I know why I'm doing this. I got confused. I know that I'm facing the dark spirit guy here, but I know that I'm next going to face the assassin guy on his board because the assassin guy faced, Ra faced Ragnar previously. So I know that my corner positioning is going to be better versus the assassin guy, which you can see on his board is exactly what happened so i actually knock him out of the game i didn't position for my board this time round 
I positioned for the um, the guy who was the uh, assassin player. So I positioned I positioned specifically for his his board. This is what you can do. Um, this is what you can do as a um, you know if you're if you're switched on. You'll notice that you can position for the enemy board as well as your own board. I positioned specifically for the corner for the enemy board. Unfortunately, I got to the point where the two star two star dark spirit and the level ten beast warrior composition was too much for me to deal with. I could not beat the level two dark spirit. He also invested much more into levels and also his overall build than I did. Um, but that was it. That, that was kind of what I wanted to talk about. Um, I think the, the 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 play that we made at the end there to position specifically for the assassin board secured me second over third, which is actually really important. Um, and I hopefully you learn a little bit about positioning for other people's boards and paying attention to who other people are fighting, especially when you've got three people left to make 